Okay, so now we get to one of our main objectives, and this is one that I was not able to figure out how to do the first time through here, and uh, I think I'm excused because <laughs> this is incredibly difficult. So here is a well. Uh, notice that on the map it says Well of Lost Souls, and uh, this is where you can find the Whistling Stone in here. But there's absolutely no hint anywhere that I have found anyway that points to this being the location of an objective. There are some items on the bottom here. Um, and there is a pressure plate in the middle. And what you're supposed to do is drop this piece of rubble here down into the well. And you're supposed to hit it so that it drops onto that <laughs> pressure plate. And this usually works. If we do that. There we go. So that's the whistling stone, naturally. Now this is worth the price of admission. And that's worth 350, and that's total 5,020. Uh, so you're not supposed to use a walkthrough when ghosting. Uh, I admit I had to use a walkthrough at three different areas in this mission when I played it the first time several years ago. I was not planning on ghosting the mission at that time, which is probably why I ended up using a walkthrough. Plus, it's extremely difficult. Um, there might be people out there that figure this out on their own by just trying everything. I think I was a little bit frustrated at the difficulty level. Um, anyway, it's it's not excusable. So I guess it's a bust, but it should be reported. So I want to now shoot a rope arrow into this. And so we're going to drop down and get some of the items that are kind of important to us. And we can do this in two trips. That's what I'm going to try to do right now. No. You've got to sort of jump down and get the momentum from the fall to sort of get you down there. Like that, exactly. There are eight items down here. Fourth breath potion, an invisibility potion, a slow fall potion, and two holy, holy water vials. Two, three, four. If you get four and then rush back up, you can make it. Just gotta hug the side here so that you don't catch the rope. And you just make it. Okay, let's do that over again, and get the other four items. So you can see the rubble piece that's landed in the, in the depression there in the middle. go. Good. No life lost, at least. Let's get the rope, and then we're on our way. So technically that's the first ghost bust, but yeah, I don't know. Walkthroughs for this mission is almost required, so. Alright, now we get to the north embalming chamber, but you're using the other door from the one I showed you earlier. So here we can get through without any alerts, um, at, least not for, at least for now. Go ahead and read this. I must remember to tell Brother Daniel about one of the sealed door doors open for a moment when he turned on the light. Lucky he turned it back off. Some of those red glowing crystals almost overloaded. I would hate to be near one if it explodes. You know, if we found a way to signal a brother to pull the lever that we installed, then run through the door and have the brother power it down so there's no explosions. Another thought, perhaps, if I used one of the speed potions, I could flip the switch and run through the tomb open gateway. Now, which one was it? Perhaps I should talk to Brother Charles about using explosive charge to blow open some gates. We only have one charge stored in the locker in the south and bombing chamber. That's one we took. I shall write the name of the tomb down next time. I'm in the Hall of Lost Heroes. Okay. Ah, yes, it was Viper 6. 
Now I'll just get that potion in my ears, hear strange noises, I shall investigate it. So this is good, we get three different hints here. One, that there's a lever that opens uh, a cage, uh, and that cage is named Viper 6. Second, um, we can use an explosive charge to open the cage instead, and if we use a speed potion, we can make it easier to that cage or that tube. So um, if I had read this a little bit closer the first time I played it, I might not have needed to use a walkthrough for this part too. There are three areas in the mission that I needed to use a walkthrough. And that's one of them. Drop that back. And uh, here's the purse, a piece of loot that we have to take in here. We cannot get this for, for Supreme, so you can skip it if you play strict Supreme mode. But if we rush in and rush back, we can get this with only a first alert from these three sleeping zombies. There. It seems to be in the middle, in the middle of all the caskets here. There's nothing else to pick up. That is worth um, 100. And we can sneak back out again as well. There we go. Perfect. All right. So next. We're now in the halls of lust or halls of sorrow. So, in order to get to the end game later, there are basically two ways. One is up the stairs here, and one is back in the mines with the barracks. So, this route here you can take for Ghost. If you use two invisibility potions, we only have one now, and one speed potion. You'll also take a couple of first alerts from two air elementals. Air elementals that are extremely jumpy. You can see and hear one of them around the corner here. There. So I'm going to show you how to get past both of them and then explain how to do the last one. Let's see. There. You do that. I think you get a first alert. At least I hear a change in their sound. And you can use another invisibility potion. One that I will show you how to get later. And now you see we alerted him. And move up here. And once you get here, you are safe. So that's the way to get past those two elementals, but there's no other way I've found. And uh, we can get by the barracks by using, um, I would say, a more concealed method. A better method for Ghost, anyway. Now we have to sneak down into the middle area of Halls of Sorrow and take four pieces of loot for statues here. Let me give it another real save. I have not real saved for a little while here. made that if I had been a little bit faster. Uh, and now we are... We are dark here, I know that. Here. 
grab this statue at least. They're worth 75 each. Two. Too. It looks like they have the same route to most of these guys. There's a light in there, um, but it only lights out each of those four quarter openings. There's holes down here as well, so watch out for those. sees me. Hmm. Okay. a little bit here. So I'm going to call these different. There are um, 12 different tombs. I'm going to call them by number here. 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12. Now all of these 12 have loot. All 12 have a golden skull and there are some that have statues down here as well. The statues you can find no problem. Or, or take, no problem. But uh, if you take a golden skull, then a, a dwarven haunt, I call them. They are, they sound like haunts, but they're smaller. Um, they don't look like haunts. They move like monkey men, really. They have no first or second alert. They go straight to third alert. Um, and whenever you take one skull, then one dwarf will spawn somewhere else in this complex here. So, for example, if we take the skull in the tomb that we're right in now, A, then a dwarf will spawn out here in the hallway. But they don't have to spawn close. They can spawn in completely different areas. Um, so the problem is to get all these 12 golden skulls and make it out alive without busting ghost. That is possible, but it's very difficult. For Supreme, it's much more difficult. Uh, because uh, for ghost, you can nudge, you can push them. Uh, from behind at an angle to certain directions and that'll that'll be required for us and you can't do that for supreme so i think you have to skip three for supreme but i'm going to get all of them for regular ghost so i'm going to read the plaques first crypt of tuhodi may he mind the horse crypt of belbaz may he protect our crypts after death belbaz is a mission author i think made missions back in the day. So I'm going to open these right now, just so they're ready. I wondered if that was a first alert, but it's not, I think. Crypt of Larson, may he journey onward. So there's a very specific method to how to do this. And an unnecessarily long lockpick here. Go. 
script of care. May his insight map your way. Crypt of totality, may he help add light to the stim. Totality is also at least a poor amuser, I believe. Crypt of Dark Angel, may his insight offer voices. Okay. And then we go to the south area. Crypt of Questorus, may he never heal a thief again. Notice that that one doesn't open. Okay. Crypt of Viper 6, interesting. May his tally of slain beasts and baddies be forever high. Doesn't work that one either. Crypt of uh, Detoiminator. May he say, I will be back. Again, cannot be opened. Crypt of Apache. Apache. May he help keep the tanks clean. I've played some of Apache's missions, I remember. Crypt of Shadowspawn. May he say, grow or shrink. And Crypt of Zarax. May his inside help your travels. Alrighty. So... Remember, it said that Viper 6 script could be open either with a lever, and as I explained earlier, uh, when the lever is pulled, you blow fuses and alert pretty much everybody. So blowing a fuse is, um, or you know, crystals, whatever you want to call it, is property damage, and alerting the ghouls is also a ghost bust. But we can use an explosive charge here, and uh, that's the way to open it. Um, now what we're going to do is drop the charge here first. We have two charges. There. And then we need to go listen for ghouls, because they can't be anywhere near. They will hear the explosion. I don't think there's anyone nearby. Let's do that. Quick. Just a second here. So we want to use a fire arrow. Let's see if this works. There we go, and then we want to go here for alerts. So they heard that. I don't want that. So I want to go back then. Yeah, now they're here. I want to make sure that they're nowhere near. can't hear them and go straight there and blow it, usually it works. So we just have to wait here until they're gone. Because alerting these is a ghost bust, and that we can't have. Let's try. 
try that. You have to move left, otherwise you get harmed yourself in the shot. Not alert. They're all far away, and that's good. Okay. That's awesome. And we have that opened. Now, you might say, well, hang on a second. I just blew open a door. Isn't that property damage and a ghost bust? <laughs> oh, crud, yeah. Now I forgot about this. Okay. That was bad, bad uh, ghosting right there. Because I knew about this, I just forgot it. That when you reload after having blown it open, then it, uh... Wait, wait, wait. Let me see. Did I use an explosive charge here? Yes, I did. Okay. Then I'm afraid I'm going to have to go back here. Yeah, I made a mistake here. My bad. But I know how to do this now. I know how to do this now. Uh, the problem is that when you blow that open, you... I just have to pick the lock on those three doors. When you blow that open, you have to... Um, you have to... If you want to get the loot inside, you have to save inside that too. Because upon a reload, the, the tomb closes again. I don't know why that is. I think it's some kind of a condition that the mission checks. So I don't want to... I have to use another explosive charge to open it up, but I don't want to do that. But yeah, you might ask, isn't blowing open that tomb property damage? Um, and you might have a point. I don't think so. Even though bashing of doors and using blowing open doors is actually mentioned as examples of property damage. Uh, the interpretation of the rule, I mean the rule itself includes... Two points, basically. One being that it has to be property, and that it obviously is. But second is that it has to be damage to the property. Now, in my opinion, that door doesn't show any sign of damage. I know that the interpretation of the rule... <laughs> See, we're right here now. I'm just going to unlock these again. The interpretation of the rule says... No property damage means no visible damage. This is in the actual official rules. Visible damage is when the object is destroyed uh, or appears to be in a different condition than before. So, uh, for example, if you drop a crate, it makes a noise indica indicative of damage. This is allowed until the crate actually breaks. The bashing of a door causes visible damage only when the door opens. The lock is broken. Items that disappear from inventory or when used do not count as destroyed. So, I wouldn't say, though, that opening this door is really breaking the lock. First and foremost, because you can close the door again easily with the lever. And it remains locked. So the lock is still functioning, if there even is a lock on it. I think it's more that it's shut so 
with so much force that you need an excessive amount of force to open it. If you uh, close the door with a lever on the inside, you can even go outside again and blow the door open a second time. Or you can go back and use the lever in the generator room and open it that way. So there's no physical evidence that that door is broken whatsoever. You can return it to its previous state. It's not like you have a door, like a wooden door. It's not like you have a wooden door where you can see a handle actually unlocking and hear the unlocking mechanism. That's what the, the rule is referring to. This is a gate that doesn't have a lock per se, and it's still able to lock and relock the door perfectly fine. There's another example of a door later on in the mission, actually, that we can bash open, but that is clear property damage where you have to you know, skip it for a ghost even, but I don't think that applies here. It's borderline, I get it. But I venture... I venture a guess that this might be okay, actually. So I'm gonna rule it okay. If you guys disagree, then of course, leave me a comment. And I would like to hear your opinion on it. Yeah, looking at the rules here a little bit more, uh, property damage is visible damage. The only vi non-visible damage that is stated being property damage is bashing in doors, but that's only when the lock is broken. And there isn't any lock on that gate that is broken. A broken lock means that it's not usable anymore. And that lock is useful. Let's try this. After you bash it open, I mean, blow it open. make a save this time. Wow. 
Nope. These guys that weren't right here didn't hear it. Then we're fine. Awesome. So now we're in the Viper 6 tomb. So let me show you here what I mean. Uh, first of all, if I save and then reload inside, it closes. See that? It happens every time. So that basically means that we have to take this skull uh, before we reload again. Okay? Otherwise we'll be locked out and uh, we have to use another explosive charge, which I don't want to do. If I use the lever here, I can open it. You can actually flip the lever and then rush out and then it'll be closed behind you. Nothing will be different from before. And then you can even go, like I said, and use the generator room or another explosive charge to open it up again. You can do that as many times as you have explosive charges, I assume. So the lock here, in my opinion, is not broken. It's just you pushed open the door, so to speak. So now the problem comes that we have to um, make sure that we can get this skull before we reload again. And uh, you might think, well, is that so difficult? I mean, we can just, we're here now, can't we just take the skull? Well, no, it's not that straightforward. Let me show you, I did not uh, save after using the numbers here, so let me do that again. There. So we're in tomb 9 right now. Um, the problem is if we take this skull right here, then there is a dwarf that spawns right in the opening to this tomb. And every tomb entrance is brightly lit, so there's no way you can get into that tomb if there's a dwarf in the way without busting ghosts. Which means that we have to take the skull in tomb 7 before uh, tomb 9. But if we take that skull, then a uh, dwarf will spawn outside or right in the opening of tomb 2. So then we have to take this skull before number 7 and before number 9, consequently. Uh, however, if we take this skull, then a dwarf will spawn right outside here, which prevents us from getting into number 5. So we have to take this one first. This will spawn, taking this skull will spawn a dwarf here, so we have to take skull 3 first. If we take skull 3, a dwarf will spawn over here, and that really isn't that big of a problem. So we can keep it to 3, uh, then uh, 5, then 2, then 7, then 9. We have to take all those before uh, we reload again. Well, actually, I can take number 3, go back inside the tomb, load or save and load, open the gate from the inside, and then go out and take um, 5, 2, 7, and then 9 without reloading. I can't reload. If I reload, I have to go all the way back to this save. So that's the problem. So what I want to do right now, then, is go and take the first skull, which is in tomb number 3, basically. Now you can see that dwarf spawned. Now the dwarves, they spawn, I would say, in hunt mode alert state, because they are very weary for the first, like, 30, 40 seconds. After that, they settle down, and... Uh, it's a little bit easier to maneuver around them. So that guy over there, we have to nudge forward a little bit in order to leave, in order to get uh, one skull later on, but I'm not going to do that right now. So now we can sort of take that away, showing that we've taken that skull. And I'm going to make a real save right here. Quick save. Okay, I'm going to turn down the volume a little bit because the... The dwarves are kind of loud. So now we have to do the next part without messing up. So we have to take the next two skulls and get back to that Viper 6 tomb without getting spotted here.
So you saw that I took five now and I took two. I'm not gonna check these off because I want to get back safely before I do that. But there's a dwarf that has spawned here and we have to rush out behind him after he settles down and then we have to push him into this doorway. Ultimately we have to sneak left here but we can't do that with him being where he is. We have to push him out of view into the open doorway that we just that we just stole the skull from. So I'm not sure if, you know, I'm going to hopefully get this on the first try. It's difficult to rush out here, it's difficult to push him without getting spotted, and it's difficult to cross over there, because there's another dwarf that has spawned here now when we took the five skull. Wait a few more seconds, then we can rush in behind him. I've done this a few times, and I've done it a couple of times on the first try as well. <coughs> All right, let's go. Perfect. Now we have to get in behind him and go from the right. Smart to crouch here. At an angle from the behind, either to the left or the right, they... They were pretty easy to push. You have to push the guy over to the right, too, eventually. The problem is that we hit the light from the doorway in the tomb that we just stole the... the skull from. I should have also closed the tomb. But I guess I'll do that when I come back. My job now is to mainly get out of here without alerting any of these. And the fact that I can't save obviously makes it a, a lot harder. Once I realized that they settled down after 30, 40 seconds, that made it a lot easier because I was trying to do this right away and I got caught every time rushing in behind him, for example. We're going to hit the light. We'll see the light in that tube in not too long here. There wasn't much in that. I almost got caught there. Let's try from here. Can we push him forward. Be able to push him enough to sneak this way. 
It's every time he makes that monkey movement. So I have a little sort of sensory area in the ground that I look for. Try it here. Okay, so the last hurdle now is getting past this guy in here. Okay. See him right here. Yep, you see him right there. Let's see. We got to sprint across this little area and come to a halt. Let's see if we can do it. There we go. Excellent. First try. Perfect. So always a little risk involved with this, but. Nice. So now what we can do... Oh, that closed. We can open all of these. This one we can take now. And in here we can take the statues. We can't take the skulls here yet. And these will open. So these open the levers in, in that order. So you have to go into each to open the next two. And that reaches the loot objective. That's great. It's easy. Or not easy, but... And uh, pulling this lever opens the entrance to, eventually, to Bantar's lair. There. Now we can take this. So when we took this, we spawned a dwarf in that tomb, and we just took the, um, the skull there, which spawned one in this one. But we already took that. Skull. So we've taken this, 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 and this now. Now we're going to go up and get the next three in this area. But now we have opened up the um, tomb to the area where Bantor is found. Alright, I think that's it. Great. Got that on the first try. Excellent. Let's see, make another real save here. So now we can safely save outside of this tomb. Oh, we have 
have to first. And now we can get in here and get this one. Sneak along this side, we should get dark before we... There, and we took that, and that spawned a dwarf out here, staring south, and we cannot sneak by him. I guess we technically could push him all the way down here, but uh, it's much easier to leave this way. I know there's a dwarf on this end, so we have to push him a little bit too, but that's doable. Past all these guys. There, he saw me for some reason. Not sure why that guy saw me. We have to go in here and get this one. Now, strangely enough, when we take that, um, the dwarf that we pushed into this hallway or this doorway will disappear and the dwarf outside of this tomb will spawn. So I don't know why they replace each other. I'm not sure. Maybe they're set as the same dwarf, really. In Dramed, I'm not sure, but that's what it is. So there we can see the next dwarf. So we have to push him as well. audio just a little bit more here. These guys are loud. saw me, okay. Okay, good. Now we can push him into the same doorway. is just a matter of spending a little bit of time here, I guess. So, yeah, I'm headed to the Lost City next. I'm going to alternate between Thief Gold and Death's Gold Embrace. And obviously those two campaigns will take some time for me to finish, so we'll see what's up after that. Uh, there is a lot of nice activity. Um, 
around the Thief community these days, especially for Thief Gold. There is a 20th anniversary contest that requires the making of a Thief Gold mission that is going to be um, coming to its conclusion at the end of the calendar year of 2018. And uh, hopefully we'll get some good releases then. Um, it's looking pretty good. A lot of very dedicated and talented authors I know that have said that they are in on that contest. There's also a Thief Gold campaign called the Black Parade, which probably is a few years down the road. Also for Thief Gold, I believe. By Skaki and a few other authors. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a lot of nice things happening. A lot of good, potentially good missions on the horizon, so it's good to be a Thief fan these days. You would think 20 years down the road that some of the work that the fans are doing would, would diminish or dwindle, but I wouldn't say that's the case. Perhaps releases uh, aren't as frequent as they used to be, but I would say that the quality and size of the missions released uh, is much greater and, and, and uh, more complex missions are released. I would say that the average quality of the mission authors is also higher. Uh, please let me know in the comments, by the way, for those of you that have played the rest of this campaign, which I have not, please let me know if the other missions are as good as this, and if they are suited for ghosting at all. I wouldn't say this one is suited for ghosting, but at least there's a lot of challenging scenarios that is fun to try to ghost. But if it's like hack and slash missions with just a lot of monsters and, and no real conceivable ghost challenges, then I'm not really interested. Um, it would not happen until I'm done with Thief Gold and Death's Golden Brace anyhow, but just throw me a comment or two about those missions. No spoilers, but let me know if they suit my channel. And thank you guys, by the way, for all the nice, encouraging comments. It's motivated me to keep going. Uh, I certainly appreciate hurrah messages, of course. But there's also a lot of you that, that are giving insight into the missions and into my style of play. Uh, bringing out points that I haven't thought of. And some of the mission creators have also watched some of my, my videos. And obviously brought more insight to the to the making behind them. So that's always fun to fun to read about and it's fun to feel a part of the community. Alright, we're almost there now with this guy. And that guy we have to nudge a little bit but not nearly as much as this one.
The next difficult thing for us in terms of um, ghost challenges is going to be up in Bantar's lair. Because we have to kill Bantar. That's explicitly instructed in the objectives. But we can't do that and bust ghost in any other way. And that's going to be challenging. I'll explain it once we get up there, but... Oh, and I also should say that I did use a walkthrough first time playing this mission to figure out how to get into the Viper 6 tomb, the first tomb, using that uh, switch in the generator room, for example. I didn't figure that out on my own. And I never really tried using this force of charge when I played it the first time. So that's two areas. I, there is a third area too that I used to walk through, so I'll point out that once I get there. We should be good here. I'm sure we're fine actually now. me there. I'm going to have to rush out. Oh. Yeah, he does see me if I go fast here, but I shouldn't have to go fast. So I want to rush into that room without him seeing me. I, I, I'm not 100% sure if that can be done. I think so. I had a little bit of problems with this guy getting reliable results. I think I can do it. did it there and then we can grab this and that spawns the haunt you saw right there but he doesn't see us at all now I think we can get back here too without him seeing us yeah and now we have to leave through that doorway We should just need to push him out forward.
just need to get past him, basically. It pulsates the light out here, so I think we should be able to get past him without any problems. There we go. Good. Now we have a dwarf here. So now we've taken everything in the northern area. Now there's a dwarf here that spawned from us taking uh, this one. But we've taken the, the skull in there, so that's good. But we have to rush past him too. Oh, didn't even see us there, strange. There he saw us. So we can just skip. There's a slight delay to the light gem, that's why it... That's why you can fool them this way. It takes like a fraction of a second before it actually changes. But we need to be as close as we can to the area where we actually light up before we do so. Seems like I am right there. Yeah, we got it. There's nobody in here, nobody in here. So that one is closed now. So that means that we can't close this gate. So there are three gates, I think, in total that we have to leave open. Anyway. So, let's move on here. Now we're heading into what's called the Tank of the Deep Ones. This is where we will find the entrance to Bantar's Lair. So you can pretty clearly see that there are two buttons on the wall here uh, in Old Dark, or not in Old Dark, but with, uh, without the texture mods. Ah, a hidden entrance. With the old textures, these two buttons blended in with the, with the background much better so you can really see them. Over here, there is a shadow break down here that you cannot fool. So you can't go in here and get these maps. Uh, you can't read it, but when you do take it, you get this map. And that's the area that we're going to head into now next. But And uh, the en secret entrance we opened is right here. So this is an area where there's a big tank. Uh, where's that tank? It's right here. And uh, the entrance to Bantar's Lair is here. And there's a couple of buttons in this area that you have to push in a certain sequence to open that um, exit. And um, that's the third and last part that I used to walk through. I didn't figure out the order of those buttons. I didn't try too hard either, to be honest with you. So he sees us. So we're not going to take those maps. But we're going to get those maps later on anyway. <gasps> okay, let's see. We're going to head this way.
We're going to take a total of nine small gold mushrooms. So hidden in these rooms. One, there's a couple of rooms where there's two, but I only think there's one here. the same room we were in. Five. Six. Seven. Should be one on each of those last ones here. Eight. Supposed to have um, 67.51 when we're done. There we go. We just made a big loop now, so we're gonna head back this way. This door you can't get into for some reason. And then there are there's one gem here on the floor worth um, 10, and then there are two more if we see them right here. <sighs> Worth 10 each more. Total 67.81. Then we're going to head into um, an area that's actually underneath the big tank or the aquarium. We have to swim against the current a little bit here. And we're going to pick up 10 coin pairs along the way. Also going to get two of those healing fish. The Margrothian fish. One, two, three, four, five. Each of those is worth five gold, so total sixty-eight thirty-one. Like I said, to kill Bantar, we have to use a very, very cheesy method. Be a hole here. Yep, you can see a hole into a. Seems to be a gem, but you can't get that from here. We're gonna, we're gonna exploit a very cheesy chink in the Dromed armor, so to speak. 
So, and it's going to be very tedious. But it's the only way we can get that objective done without busting ghosts. And in my opinion, we haven't busted ghosts yet. Although we are going to do that. I don't want to take any unnecessary ghost busts. have some weirdly talking zombies. Through here there is a chest here, which I believe is, oh, is just empty. Another chest here. I think they can hear me. I picked the lock on this, so... Here's a blue gem, and that is worth uh, 300, 7131. Okay, and now we start with this whole button puzzle here. So there is a total of, um, I can't remember, is it five buttons that we have to push? One, two, three, four, five, six buttons. And the first one is right behind this wall. <laughs> There's a stationary guy here. And you can drop down and actually... Prevent that. I think I'm on the right track. So Garrett gives an indication, a verbal cue there, if you start right. There we go. So that's button number one. The next buttons we have to use the gem of Oldorf to push. And that can potentially alert some of these patrollers. In here, you have to throw it up in the ceiling. Nobody around that heard that. Let's go in here. So for each button you push, you unlock another button, so to speak, or reveal it. Didn't hit it there for some reason. You gotta look straight up. There. OK. 
Okay, the last button has now opened up back in this room. It's up here, and we also have to use the gem here. But of course, we will alert this guy if we do that. All together, that's pretty good. So what I want to do is I want to, if we just leave a healing potion or something like that here, and then throw it. Then it should work. I didn't hit the button there, so... Hmm, not sure why this doesn't work. I've Usually there's a little range to that gem. Where you don't have to sort of hit it dead on. There, let's see, that should do it. There we go. So there's a certain randomization to it if he hears it or not. Now we have to use a water arrow on this button. That reveals the entrance to Bantar's lair. Be a little bit quick before those controllers come back here. Okay. Now, what I want to do is I want to shoot four rope arrows, and I only have four, but that's okay. Into here. 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 And here. Because when we drop back down, I don't want to need to use slow fall potions to avoid getting hurt. I want to save and then see if this works. Right now, let's see. Good. That works. And now we're going to get to that super, super cheesy <laughs> scenario where we have to um, do a lot of reloading to get this to work. I'll explain once we get in there. But basically, Bantar is going to enter a fight with um, two thieves. You can see him in the very distance here. We also have to push one of the monkey men here forward to get around him. Um, we want Bantar to die, and we want these two monkey men to die, uh, along with the two thieves. But the thieves will die anyway, because Bantar will kill them easily enough. Uh, what we can exploit here is that the woman, which you see on the far left in there, you see the other thief on the right. The woman shoots arrows. She has a crossbow. I took a slow fall potion back there, by the way. I'm taking an invisibility potion here. Um, the woman's arrows can deflect Bantar's shots. He shoots huge eyes that explode and kill them on impact. One shot each and they're dead. But um, if he shoots at her and she deflects a shot, then um, she will survive. And um, for each shot Bantar makes, he slides forward ever so slightly. So if we can... Every time she deflects a shot... If we can save and then reload until she deflects the next one, we can do that over and over again until she has deflected about 12 shots. Then Bantar will have slid forward enough to fall off the edge, and then the swordsman, the other thief, will come down and actually kill Bantar. And that way Bantar is not only dead, but he is out of view of the wisp, which you can see in the background behind him. Because the wisp, if Bantar dies up on the ledge there, which you can also have happen, the wisp will see the, the, his corpse every time it comes out. And it'll be high alert, and uh, we won't be able to go up there and get his amulet and get the other objective without getting spotted by the wisp. 
So that's the big problem here. The wisp really is the issue. Okay. We also have to, in order to sneak down to the right, behind um, the last blue pillar there, we have to douse the torch on the right. We have to do that during their conversation, otherwise we get spotted. And we have to use a gas arrow. We have to time this to a certain extent here. Let me see. Definitely make a real save. So yeah, you'll see the method. We can also get the last pickpocket here from that thief. No, from, yeah, from the thief. Too late, I think. Why, Vantar? I thought we had a deal. A deal. There we go. Why, yes, my little friend, but I changed it. Whoa, the guild will not stand for it. The last quake buried our training hall. We'll read that later. This is now we can sneak no along. Well, let's not interrupt the conversation. But you. You promised you would stop causing the earthquakes. <laughs> you see, I have very important business to conduct. Business? Are you a fool? We're trapped here and we'll starve to death. Correction. You will die. I died long ago. Hold still. <laughs> It'll hurt less. Hey. Okay, so now I'm going to make a real save here and, and just call this Bantar, I guess. And we'll make a quick save too. Okay, he shoots on him first, but that shouldn't happen when we reload. See, that's what we don't want to happen. We want her to deflect his shot. And this is going to take just a tons of reloading. Trust me. <laughs> so, if you want to skip through this, be my guest. I understand. But I want to show the method to you guys that it actually works. So, it can take us 15 minutes. It can take us 45. See, there we got one already. That is perfect. We got the first one after just a minute or so. That's very good, because I usually take a long time to get the first one. So, this is just a matter of us just repeating this over and over and over again. And um, when he has deflected, or she has deflected about 10 to 12 shots, we'll see... Yeah, so if she saw, shoots him too many times without him shooting, then he will eventually de die on the throne. And then also that wisp will come out, so all of that stuff is not good. But we'll see the tips of his um, toes come out on the right there, to the right of the pillar. That's why I've sort of maneuvered myself so we can see that once it happens. So we've got one deflection so far. Try to keep count. So this is the tedious part of ghosting right here, when you come up, well, I'm happy that I came up with this, that I figured this out. I First time I saw her deflect the shot, that was just a fluke accident. There we go, that's number two. Then I realized it could be done. 
but of course it's it's a tedious and and, and uh, painstaking thing to do. I think I've done it three times before. Deflection so far. I also timed um, the triggering of their conversation with the Wisp. I know exactly when to trigger the conversation while the Wisp is in the back room because that means it's not going to come out here and interrupt this fight. If it comes out here and starts shooting, it'll attract the monkey men, and there's... I didn't show him, but... There's another guy, a tricksterling, out where the monkey men were. That will... that shoots. Uh, there we go, that's number three. I believe he shoots fireballs or something like that. And we want him to come out afterwards and kill the two thieves. But if the Wisp comes out and shoots early, then he will kill the thieves before Bantar is dead. And that, of course, is not going to make us able to get Bantar's amulet. You can kill Bantar if you use an invisibility potion and run up behind him with a backslash. But the Wisp alerts them, so that's a bust. Eyes to you. There we go, that's four. Oh, no, 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 no. That is not good. That is not good at all. This we can't have. I actually think I'm going to restart this. Sorry. That's just how it's going to have to be. Perfect. One already. No, no, no. Did we do it too early this time? We might have. We'll see. We'll see. Uh, this is. We're just gonna have to try this. Wisp is in the back room. It'll roam around there and that was 
two. It'll roam around there until Bantar is sort of dead. Okay, this this is not very good here. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. I have a feeling this maybe I was a little bit too early when I timed the uh, wisp. Yeah, I think so. Yes, I was. It doesn't seem like the wisp got fully into the back room. Move too fast there. So I don't know what she alerts to. She just has her back turned. Still a little bit. I'm, I'm supposed to shoot that right as the wisp comes out. Maybe a little bit too early there still. We'll see here. Why, Vantar? I thought we had a deal. stand for it. The last quake buried our training halls. This is of no consequence to me. But you you promised you would stop causing the earthquakes. <laughs> you see, I have very important business to conduct. Business? Are you a fool? We're trapped here and we'll starve to death. Correction. You will die. I died long ago. Let's try that. See, I have my hopes for this one. I have my hopes, but hopes doesn't really get you. Too far in this game. That was one.
Like I said, she has to deflect 11 or 12 shots. Without the wisp coming out and shooting them. So, tough task, to say the least. I do have bigger hope for this one. It's also good that the Wisp hasn't shot a single time yet. Not good. Okay. Let's see how yeah. you look as a porcupine. So, to all of you out there, I'm sorry for needing to do this. Uh, it's the only way, like I said, that we can avoid a ghost bust here, and I want to. Let's see how you look as a porcupine. There we go. Yeah. Oh, I don't like that wisp. I see. <laughs> Like that wisp back there. I see ya. Haven't had that much problem with them in the past, though. I see ya. I see ya. That was four deflections, though. I see ya. I see ya. Five. Okay, so I've skipped forward a little bit here, and you can see Bantar has finally slid off the edge. This took a lot longer than I thought, and now that guard is going to come down. Okay, he's going to get shot, so we have to reload now. But you can see he's on the edge to the right of that pillar. He kills her, but then he falls or slides down. And then he shouldn't get killed. Or the swordsman should get killed. Eyes to you. All right, you asked for it. So we got to replay it now until that swordsman finally gets killed.
Oh no, now he falls down in that hole. Sometimes that happens too. That obviously cannot happen for us. Oh, he had him there. Yeah, this just took so much longer than I than it did last time right, I played. You asked for it. But now we've got it, so it shouldn't take that long. Looks like Bastard is no more. Something odd is going on. Stay alert. That's perfect. Now he's going back. And now the Wisp is going to end up seeing him eventually. Shoot. Poor son. Better you than me. I hope. We're gonna have fun gutting you, Tapper Boy. And when the Wisp sees him. Oh no, 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 don't you dare. I'm not kidding. Come on out. That's why it's so important that we stay completely hidden behind this pillar during the fight. Now the monkey men are going to come out. And I want him to kill the monkey men. Let's see if he can do that. So we got to replay this now until the monkey men die. One. Okay, the other one too. The tricksterling will come out soon too now. And uh, and we'll shoot that other thief. Let's make sure. That actually happens now. It's a lot of reloading here, I know that, but we have to make sure that that, that, that thief dies. We cannot do this with him being alive. He only, he can only take one hit, it seems like. It's not gonna, we have to make this work. Well, th this we just have to replay. I don't know if it takes a thousand times. This is going to work. Come on, thief. You can, can you please just hit him? <laughs> please, just do this. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. There we go, finally. Oof.
Why is that wisp not shooting now? There we go. There we go. Excellent, 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 excellent. That was the Trixterling. You saw him. Now everything is as it should be. That Trixterling needs to wander around a little bit and then he'll head back. And then we finally, finally can get into this cave. Now that Wisp should be resuming his or its patrol. Come on, person, just leave. Oh, ho, 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 ho. You're going to my diabolical trap. Yet. Let us save there. Bantar is dead. Make sure we stay out of the view of the wisp that we take Bantar's amulet here. There we go. Got that uh, objective checked off. Drop into here. Can't take any damage here hitting the walls. So I want to go up here, and then there are some arrows in the water that we want to take. Oh. So that was five water arrows. Here you have three gas arrows. And we want to go back to the initial cave or the initial place where we surfaced. And now we have to make the full dive all the way to Bantar's cave without taking damage. We can do that, but it's difficult. Hardly anything in it. Yeah, you see, you can't touch the sides, and you have to be very fast here.
just gonna see if it can be done with my current air supply here. Yes, it can. Okay, I just gotta make sure that I don't touch the sides. Last hurdle here. In this layer, anyway. There's plenty more things coming up, but... That was, you're talking two seconds there. One second even. Guild Maps Bantar, here are the copies of the maps you requested. Since you arrived here, things have changed. We are richer, and our back door is protected by you. However, if you keep causing those cave-ins and seal off rooms, our maps will be totally useless. The Guild must have several escape points, and you already sealed off two of them, and killed some of our business partners in the mining town of Margroth. As for the assassinations at the town, my men will cause much chaos and murder on the night of the new moon. Your gold will be used to pay for labor to clear the Eastern Passage. The last earthquake you caused changed an underground river to flow right through the Eastern Passage. So you're setting up a lab far above our guild come into question. As for the guarding of your lab, don't worry. We are trained to not be noticed and to notice. Nothing escapes the eyes of my men. Besides, you're the one with the army after you and I see uh, what powers you have. However, you still owe us the money because of the expenses you caused us. Guildmaster Zilfin. So that um, changed to the book must be in his lab. Find the lab on the eastern half of these ruins and cross the pit and find the mirror room. It is the only way to the eastern half of Margroth. So some changes to the objectives now. And this one we can drop back, so we're going to do that. Once he gets back, and then we have to jump back out. We don't have to swim back through that cave. some of the trickstooling shot burning there in the water. Strange. Now we want to read what we stole from that one... Yes. Stiletto. You and Cloquesta must go to the Bantar's, to Bantar's throne room. Since the last earthquake buried our lower training halls and severed our access to that level, you must enter in from the upper mines. If he causes another earthquake, then may be sealed as well. So time is of the essences. Cross the mirror room using the deity windows. This will lead you to the pit of the ethereal cyclone. 
You must use four rope arrows to cross it. There are targets to anchor those arrows. Slowly climb down and drop into the red ethereal waters and catch those ropes. Otherwise you're meant you may spend a few centuries falling through the cyclone. I hope the cyclone does not consume those arrows while you are dealing with that madman. Convince Bantar to stop destroying our guild with the earthquakes. If you cannot convince him, kill him. Return here for rank increase and a rich reward. Guildmaster Zilfin. So that shows a little bit of what the thieves were instructed to do. Shot over there that I think keeps falling. definitely not me. I think it's the shot that you see burning in the water there that keeps falling every time we reload. Could it be? Let me just see. <laughs> yeah, I think that's what it is. So that's not us alerting anybody here. Yeah, that's what it is. So that's the tricksterling shot that actually alerts that wisp. But it was only now, it wasn't earlier. Ah, well, this has nothing to do with us. We didn't alert the wisp, so let's just have the wisp leave. And yeah, we're good. We are good. Perfect. Took a little bit longer than I anticipated here, but I think we should be good to go. See, we returned everything, right? Yeah. So now we're going to catch a hold of the rope and fall back down. You're intended to use a couple of slow fall potions, but... I can close that chute. I'm going to close up the in entrance to Bantar's lair. Dodge the zombies or whatever they are. Get out of here. I'm going to use two water arrows here to open and close this area. We're just going to head back out now, really. There's um, a few more pieces of loot to pick up before we leave and get back to the tombs. make a real save here. Yeah. So 
So we're actually gonna descend through an area above the aquarium or the tank here. We're not gonna leave through that entrance. That's why I closed it. Let's see. These two Kraymen here. There's another stationary Kraymen up here. That I really can't figure out. Because he's never alerted. Or is it a bug beast? Yeah, it's not even a Kraymen. It's a bug beast. Anyway. This is the way up. These stairs are annoying. Okay. So this is the big tank. The tank of the deep ones. Um, there is a piece of loot in the tank, but I'm going to go ahead and skip that, and I'll show you why. There are some piranhas in here that I am not sure if really behave like enemies, but they do seem to react. They're the ones in yellow. You can see one is buzzing around down there. And, um... They do seem to change their patrol or their s swim routes as soon as I drop into the water here. And I, I, I take that as a at least a hunt mode alert. So I'll treat them as enemies and therefore skip this piece of loot. I'll show you what happens to them so you can be the judge if, if you think that's a correct skip or not. But at one point I didn't skip it. Let me show you. So in order to get that piece, you have to flip this switch. So yeah, if you take a look at the the yellow fish down there. And there's one over there to the left too. Those are the ones I'm a little bit worried about. As soon as I drop in here, they will change their... Or will they? Let's see if we can actually get by undetected here. Yeah, see? See how it comes over here? I haven't been spotted here. I think it's just a triggered thing. But still, they are enemies and they trigger as having seen me. And if they touch me or I touch them, they explode and we, we die instantly. So they're definitely enemies. Some of the other fish here are also moving quicker now. So if we swim down here, the switch we flipped opened this manhole cover. And then we find the gem that we could see through the hole earlier. So you can see how they are swimming around here. So to me, the change in the piranhas is enough for me to skip this piece of loot worth 300. It seems like a ghost bus to me. Now they're peaceful and they are not if we go in there. So yes, I think that's a pretty clear bust if we head in there. So skip that one. We're 300. We've skipped quite a bit uh, so far. And here, though, there's one more piece of loot that we do not have to skip. It's a chest that we can pick. With uh, Crystal Shard, worth 50, total 7431. And then now we're above the area where we took the small gems earlier. <laughs> I want to jump and land on that red crystal that sticks out from the wall. <laughs> Without getting stung. There we go. So we're going to drop down a little further here. But over here you have two more red gems. 
Total 300, 7731. I skull. This will make a nice little bonus. Worth 100, and then seven small gems worth 10 each. There. 7901. And we should be able to drop onto here. There's nobody down here, so that's not an issue. And this is where the small gems have fallen down from above. So now we can head back to the Halls of Lost Heroes and get the four remaining skulls. And then we are done in the entire tomb area and we can head back up to the mines. Oh. Don't think I've ever seen this witch before. glowing rat. Yeah, hmm. I don't think I've ever seen that switch before. If anyone can enlighten me as to what that switch does, that would be great. If there's something hidden that I haven't found here, maybe? I've played this mission so many times and so thoroughly, I've never noticed this switch. What I'm thinking is maybe it opened the door that I said couldn't be opened earlier. Let me look real, real quick. This one, no. No. Alright, yeah, if anyone can tell me if you know, or if you can find out. I'm not really an editor, so I, I don't know how to <laughs> find those things in Dramed. that. Good. Alright, it took a while up there with Bantar getting him uh, getting him to die in the way that I wanted. So I'm sorry that I off-screened some of that. Uh, it was just a bunch of reloading, essentially. And I... <gasps> I ended up having to um, redo that conversation a couple more times, actually, before I got the desired <laughs> outcome. Okay, anyway, now we can start closing these. So we can close that. And we are going to end up taking... Oh, yeah. So we're going to take this one. Here, that spawns a dwarf in the entrance here. Uh, but we have to leave this way. We don't have to nudge him. We can sneak by him without needing to to do that. We can take this one in here next. There, that spawned a dwarf in this tomb, but... Obviously, we've taken the one in there already, and we don't have to go back there. Close the tomb to... or the gate to that tomb. There's nobody in here, right? No, but we can take this one now. There. So taking that skull, spawned another dwarf over here, facing south. Uh, we closed the gate to this tomb now, but we cannot close this gate because we can't get back into this tomb to flip that switch. And we can also not get into this tomb to flip the switch to close get this gate. So these two will be left open. So those are supreme busts, but um, that's fine. I'll take it. The last skull we need to take here is this one. There. 
And that spawned a dwarf in here. But again, we don't have to cross that way, so we're good. And now we have to rush past this area. Without getting spotted. There we go. Easier than I thought. Great. We should have 8301 now. We do. We've taken all 12 skulls. Now what we need to do is just get out of here. Now when I leave here, I occasionally run into a wisp for some reason. There it is. There's some, for some reason there's a wisp that spawns. I have no idea why it spawns or how. If anyone could explain that to me, that would also be great. Yeah. Gotta make sure we're not caught by it. It must spawn from something that we've done. We want to get all the way back here. Before I leave, let me just check my inventory, make sure that I have what I need here. So we obviously have Banter's Amulet. So we are going to use the barracks key now to open this one again. And we'll lock it. Of course we can't return that barracks key without taking another bust from the Bugbeast lady up there. So we're not going to return that. Alrighty. Okay, let's go ahead and make a real save here.